YouTube Game Dev. Gaming the dev all over the place until I dev my games out. <laughs> so we left off last November with knights fighting by the cliffside in this epic battle by the ocean. So the next obvious thing to add was undead skeleton crabs. These guys are cute, they're a little wonky, but I think they're super cool and they crawl around using inverse kinematics and stuff. It gets a little glitchy sometimes, but they're really cool. Next I started playing Star Wars Dungeons and Dragons. And for that I started prototyping some environments thinking that I could make like a Star Wars game. I realized that I was going to need a custom character builder to make all of our characters, so I put together one real quick. But then I wanted infinite characters. I started making use of the blend shapes from Blender so that the models could be different shapes and body sizes and types. Got a little weird, but overall it was kind of cool, so I don't know, I put it on the back burner and maybe I'll touch it again later. After that, yep, I don't know, I made explosive vacuum cleaners. And then I updated my old spooky Halloween map for Gary's Mod. Gave it some fresh new textures. Played around on it, super fun, super cool. Honestly, I think Halloween should last like way longer than just one day. And then after that I was walking around and I saw this cool art installation and I was like, what would it be like if this thing was alive? So I made it alive and it was kind of scary. So I don't know. A little cool thing to see here. In January, it was time for the Global Game Jam again, so I built a team of two industry professionals, two rising game dev students, and two absolute noobs to game dev. Together, we made a couch co op game where you clean different places as these animals and you have to use the different tools. Uh, for this jam, I was like the team manager, so I made sure that everyone had tasks to do. Um, I got rid of blockers and I made sure that everyone learned a lot and had a good time. So it was a really good learning experience for the new guys and we all had great vibes and everyone had a blast. So super fun time doing game dev in person. Later on in January, I started prototyping a RPG game about learning how to live. I prototyped some game mechanics like budgeting, uh, creating a cool inventory system with rigid bodies that move around inside a bag. I made a system for placing stickers on any object you want, including the player character. That was really cool. For pretty much most of January and February, I woke up at 4 a.m. every morning and got straight to work for about like two or three hours, just prototyping features and stuff. I even recorded a couple sessions, but most of it ended up looking like this or like this, so not too exciting, Bruh. mostly just confusing. But it was a good time, I got a lot done in those early morning hours, so pretty happy with the results. When you put something first thing in the morning, it's hard to skip it, and it's hard to get distracted by other things, so that's a good strategy. And I'm still doing that today. I do like 30 minutes every morning. I might only get like a couple things done every morning, but it adds up over time, so eventually I get a lot of progress done. One very important thing that I learned is how to retarget animations on a humanoid skeleton in Godot. I found a really good tutorial and it should be in the description. I created a tutorial on how to render OpenGL graphics using Qt and C++. And I also created a to-do list application as well as a prototype for a budgeting app that I think I'm going to make soon. I got really into shaders for a little bit and made a couple ocean wave shaders. And there's no good transition for this. So I made a grilled cheese hammer out of resin and grilled cheese with the boys. And then I helped them make a wooden pinball table. So that was really cool. Um, what's next? I started building a board game video game for one of those game jams that I started but never finished. Um, so instead of finishing that, I decided to make a game jam project template so that every time I start a game jam, I'll have some code assets that I can reuse. 
I made a first person player controller with sliding and like jumping and all that stuff. I joined a couple of my game jam friends and we started building a game where you program the tactics of a team of fighters and you have to battle your way through dungeons. I worked on this for around three months but then I wanted to work on other projects so I moved on. But I've been watching the progress of this team and the art is looking amazing, the gameplay looks awesome. Check out the description, there's probably a Steam page or a trailer out by now. This is going to be a really cool game so definitely check it out. I worked on my 3D modeling skills by following some tutorials. I designed some people and I built some PlayStation style environments. I'm really trying to improve my art skills so that anytime I have a good idea I can just instantly whip it up and have something to show for it. I really like cyberpunk type stuff so I wanted to explore uh, like dog robots and you know maybe a dystopian world that feels wrong to say that I want to explore that but it evokes emotion I think and that's what it's all about really right on a positive note I was inspired by my firefighter friend to build a simulator where you use a team of different drones to cut off a forest fire from burning down houses you have to use a combination of dog robots, uh, water boat robots, and quadcopters to disperse water to sort of cut off the line of fire that's spreading around the island. It's actually a really fun game. Um, it's pretty short, but you can try to you know finish it in as fast of a time as you can and get like the least amount of houses burned down. So that's a fun challenge. I was also building my career skills during this time and I put together an application that watches whatever is running on your computer and automatically logs the activities that you're doing into Google Calendar. So it's really easy for you to track like how long you spent working on a game dev project or writing a book project. I once again had the itch for space stuff and I put together a prototype where you're a little robot floating around in the NASA's model of the International Space Station. They have their models for free on their website, it's pretty cool. And then I put together some humanoid robots that were programmed with different instructions so that they keep on doing each other's work and getting upset at each other. It's sort of like a philosophical... It says something. I don't know what it's saying, but it says something, you know? It makes you think. I then had my best game dev week of the year. I revisited those knights that were fighting on the cliffside and I really wanted to make it multiplayer. So I took a week and just cranked out a dedicated server multiplayer game. How did you know I was in this room? Huh? Is there a flag above my head? Oh no! <laughs> On God, you fool! <laughs> Uh, there's a link to that video in the description, and I also made the code available on GitHub for anyone who's interested about multiplayer in Godot. During that process, I also discovered that I can convert my old Gary's Mod maps into Blender and then bring them into my games. There is a game dev philosophy that I believed in where you should make the gameplay first and keep it completely separate from art. Your core game loop should be fun without having any art assets attached to it. So, I thought that I should just focus on the mechanics. I really believe that the games that I had made were neat, but they're not that fun, at least to me. So I vowed to give up making art until I figured out how to make a fun game. I started using programmer art, just like cubes and spheres, and I also used the Kenny Asset Pack that I got online. Using an asset pack was actually really inspiring because you could see all the assets and then decide what to make with them. So I started building a prototype for a civilization type game, but instead you swap out the world tiles as you expand your city. So as you expand your city to take up more of the world, you can sort of craft the world and the battlefield to be whatever tiles you want them to be, depending on like what you've unlocked. I really wanted to make my own couch co-op game. So I built a split screen car driving game where you try to run over skeletons and go off of jumps. Kind of just fun to play around. Not really a lot of a game loop though. And I reused a bunch of assets that I had already made so I guess it counted.
One time I was at a party and I saw a Disney Plus show called Star Wars Landscapes. Basically the camera flies around small pre-recorded battles playing out on Star Wars planets and it just serves as like background ambience. But when I was watching I was like what if those were real battles? I want to see real Star Wars battles going on and see like the winning and losing push and pull of the tide. So I decided to make something similar. I'm simulating a war going on between rock, paper, and scissors golems. Basically these golems are fighting. Some of them are stronger than others, rock, paper, scissors type. And they're fighting for resources and territory and they're trying to build a city as they battle. You kind of just like let it go in the background and watch. And it's actually really cool. It's actually really cool. Everything I do is really cool. I'm amazing. In October, I joined a group of game developers who release projects every season. I started a project that I'm hoping to finish in the next month or two. I'm building a game where you have to control space rovers on another planet, and you have to do science things in order to escape the scary bunker that you're trapped in. My goal for this year was to get one game on Steam that I could look at and be proud of. As you can see, I was all over the place, starting and stopping projects. I spent this year worrying that my games weren't fun enough, worried that I was wasting my time, worried about making a game that my friends would want to play, worried about needing to prove myself that all this work has been worth it, waking up at 4am to grind on something that I'll throw in the trash. I'm two years into this and I haven't even published a game yet. I'm so focused on winning the game dev game that I forgot why I started it in the first place. The reason I like making games is to take a part of myself and bring it to life. I want to express emotions and tell a story and change how people see the world. Video games have changed my life and I want to give that back to others. So I'm not going to worry about all those things, I'm just going to do whatever feels right in the moment and follow the passion. Looking back at everything I've done so far, I think we're doing okay. So I'm just going to keep doing. Good luck out there.